guys, Jessica here, the Ferdy Family Coach, and welcome back to our beginner dog training series. In this video, we're gonna be talking about teaching the stay cue. Before we actually get into getting Kim into position, she she does not like when I record videos. She, <laughs> she would much rather play. Um, so really quick, before we get into actually getting Kim into position and working on stay, I want to let you know that this video is a two-part series. So this is the first video of a two-part video series. Uh, if you're watching this on Premiere, then the next video on my channel will be the second part to this video. So make sure you are subscribed. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. And when the second part of this video uh, goes up live, then you'll also get a notification. So uh, the reason that I'm breaking this into a two-part video series is because we need practice. We need to start training the stay cue in one position before we can actually start adding distance. So uh, what I mean by that is actually getting our dog to understand what stay means. And this can take some time. And of course, this is going to vary um, with every dog. Every dog is different. But before we can actually start adding distance, we need to get really good at what the stay cue means. And uh, it, again, if <laughs> I know I've said this in my other videos, but if this is the first video you are seeing in the beginner dog training series, I highly recommend you check out the the whole playlist from the beginning. The link is in the description below. And the reason that I want you to do this is because we're building a bond with our dog. We're building a communication pathway with our dog. So. As you go through the beginner dog training series, you're going to start seeing that you and your dog are understanding each other a little bit better every time you train. And that's the whole point. And guys, that's the key to any good training routine with you and your dog is that building that trust, building that communication between you and your dog. That's what we want to be doing. And so I definitely want you to start from the beginning, even though you may see something that seems super easy that you're like, I don't want to waste my time on this. You're not wasting your time. I promise you because you're building trust, you're building a bond, you're building communication with you and your dog. And there is nothing that can replace that in the entire world. And you're going to notice if you have multiple dogs, or if you start training with your dog now and you know 10 years down the line you have another dog and you come back to these videos or you remember what to do and you start training with that dog you're going to notice that every dog is different and the way our dogs communicate is very very different and i've had multiple dogs in my lifetime thus far and i can tell you with and i have trained so many dogs i mean i have trained hundreds of dogs and every single one of them is just a little bit different. Of course, there are things that are going to be similar between dogs, body language and, and everything that's just genetically bred into a dog, what they get from their canine ancestors, that's going to be pretty similar. But every dog is different. Some dogs are more, gen more gentle than others. Some dogs are uh, are, you know, just love to rough house. Some dogs are very vocal. Some dogs are very quiet. And learning your dog is going to make or break your training. So I definitely want you to start from the beginning of the beginner dog training series. So the link again to the playlist is in the description below. Start from the beginning and you will quickly work your way back up to this video. Um, and I really, really highly encourage you to do that if you are just starting out. So Let's talk about the stay cue. And in all reality, there are three phases of the stay cue. We learn what stay means, right? So we teach our dog what we expect them to do when we say the word stay. Or I'm also going to show you, I, we put our hand up flat like this, like a stop sign. So, and, and again, this is something I do with every dog regardless. And I have talked about this in, in previous videos. Even if your dog is not deaf, even if your dog can hear, I really highly encourage you to incorporate hand signals. And the, the primary reason is because we never know 
right? We could wind up adopting a dog tomorrow that is deaf, that was born deaf, or something unfortunate happened to them and they are now deaf. Um, also, as dogs age, it's just one of the facts of life. Sometimes things happen. You know, our eyesight can go, hearing can go. So you definitely wanna make sure you are doing vocal cues and hand signals whenever possible. If, even if you don't start out with hand signals, you can always start adding them in. Your dog will start picking up on it. If your dog already knows a verbal cue and you start incorporating in a hand signal, your dog is going to really understand so much quicker what that hand signal means. So I would encourage everyone to not just do vocal cues, but also to use hand signals. I think it can really come in handy. So like I was saying, there are actually three, three different uh, segments of learning a stay cue. The first one, as I was just saying, is actually learning what we want out of them when we say stay or when we put our hand up like this. This is this is our um, hand cue for stay. Learning that is going to be the first step and that's primarily what we're gonna go over in this video. Once we get good at that, once your dog is really understanding what you want, then we're going to start adding in distance and once we get good at that, we're gonna start adding in distraction. So that's gonna be part two. So uh, definitely make sure that you watch this video first, then the next video, the part two video, where we add in distance and distraction. Uh, but again, if you are brand new to the beginner dog training series, check out the playlist in the description below. Uh, real quick, because I actually haven't even introduced myself yet. My name is Jessica. I'm the furry family coach. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Thank you so much for being here. My channel is all about dog training, dog behavior, canine nutrition, canine enrichment, and I do throw some things in here and there about cats when I'm asked to because I am a pet parent coach after all. So if any of that is up your alley, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Again, when you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, if at any point during this video, you're like, man, this is cool, I really like this, please show some love and give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And it helps you the YouTube algorithm to know what kind of videos you like and to know that I'm doing a good job on my channel and that is so very important. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here with me today. And even if you are not watching this on Premiere, if you're watching this later, make sure to post your comments below. I love to answer your questions, hear what you're thinking, um, get a feel for what you're here for, why you clicked on this video. Post that in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. So let's get into actually training a stay cue. All right, so I've got my training treats here and I <laughs> I made the mistake before filming this video. I went to Chick-fil-A for lunch and my dog got a piece of a chicken nugget. And so now I know that was too high of a value for to give, be able to give her lower value <laughs> treats right now. And since I am recording a video, I cut up part of a nugget and did teeny tiny little bites and that's what we're gonna be using as training treats. Uh, just so I can show you in this video how we do a stay. And again, this is a part one of the stay where we're gonna be working in close contact with our dog. We're just gonna get down the behavior that we want. We're not going to be adding distance. We're going to try to get uh, increase our duration at this point, but we need to start with even just a second. So what we wanna do is get our dog into a sit position and then what we're gonna do is give the cue stay and simultaneously put our hand out like a stop sign like I was showing you previously. It's just a flat palm. This is the hand signal that I'm going to be using in conjunction with the verbal cue, which is stay. And as long as your dog stays, even for a second, we're gonna reward that. We're gonna praise them, we're gonna give them a treat. Um, now, if your dog is not very food motivated, try a higher value reward and if they still are not very food motivated, find out what does motivate them. Maybe it's play. Maybe they have a favorite toy or a favorite ball that they really love. You can use that as a reward. The whole idea here is to ingrain in them the behavior that we're asking for when we say the word stay and we give the hand signal for stay, which is a flat palm, kind of like a stop, like stop, right? But we don't have to be like mean or jerky about it. <laughs> we can be calm about it and nice about it because we're just, we're all learning here. Training is fun. So what we're gonna do is get our dog in the stay position and I'm gonna lure her into position. So come on, sweetie. Get over here. And I wanna sit. Yes, 
Jessica girl. All right, so I rewarded her for getting into position, for luring her into position and for that sit. So now I'm just gonna say stay. Yes, good job. So as long as your dog stays in that position, we want to reward that. And we want to gradually start increasing to two seconds, to five seconds, to six seconds, up until we can get to about 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a long time. Count in your head if you need to. But what we wanna do is get our dog to stay and gradually increase the duration. So I want her back in a sit, so stand. Okay, I'll do the sit, yeah, we'll do the sit. Good job. Okay, stay. No, that wasn't a stay. You lay back down, come on. Sit, stay. Nope, come on, back up. We want to stay in the sit position, okay? Come on. Stay. Okay, almost. We almost had it. Okay, come on back up. Up. Good girl. Okay. Stay. I <laughs> said, you think I mean lay down? We're not doing a lay down. We're not doing a lay down. Come on, baby. It's okay that your dog is trying to figure out what it is you're asking. And right now, she thinks I'm telling her to lay down. And I just have to teach her that that's not what I mean. What I mean is for her to stay in that sit position. So let's get back up. Sit. Yes. Stay. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Stay. Back up. Come on, back up. She is a dog of comfort, I will say. Stay. <laughs> Come on. Wanna get back into a sit? Sit, yes, good job. Now we're gonna stay. Five, six, yes, good girl, that's my good girl. Okay, stay. Eight. Yes, good girl. So we're just gradually increasing the duration. So she's starting to understand that I don't want her to lay down, that I want her to stay where she is. So as soon as I turn around and talk to you, she's going to lay back down because she is a dog of comfort. Believe me, she seeks out comfort above all else. So let's see if we can get her back in a sit. Sit. Yes, that's my good girl. Stay. Yes, good job, good job. Stay. Eight, nine, ten. Yes, good girl, this week, good girl. We got to ten, didn't we? Okay, ready? No. Get back up. Can we just sit? Yes, sit, good girl. Okay, stay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, oh, almost, almost. Come on back up. We almost got it. Stay. Good job, good job. So you notice there, I counted to 15 and as soon as I got to 15, mind you, I was just at 10 before I decided to go all the way up to 15. Once I got to 15, she laid back down. So that was just pushing her a little bit too far and that's okay. If your dog does this, we just want to go back to the last point where they successfully did what we were, we were looking for, which for her was 10 seconds. 
and it's okay because I'm going pretty fast right now with her because I'm filming this video for you. So uh, you don't need to go so fast with your dog. Um, I'm pushing her and it's, I may be pushing her just a little bit too much. Fortunately, this isn't anything strenuous, but um, I am pushing her because I'm recording this video for you. So understand that when you get, just go in one, two second increments at a time, then your dog is going to be able to understand a little bit better what it is you're wanting. They're going to be able to get past that uh, one or two second increments really easily, really quickly. Don't, you don't have to, you know, go in five, don't, don't go in five second increments. I think that is quite a bit for a dog that is just learning. Um, so just gradually increase to where you can get to about 30 seconds and we'll try this one more time. Sit. Yes, that's my good girl. All right, stay. Yes, good girl. This is my good girl. Okay, um, we're all we're all done. We finished the treats, so we're done with training for the moment. Okay, so that is the idea. That is how we start teaching our dog how to stay. We're just teaching them what behavior we expect when we give a certain cue word. Which of course, of course, you saw me. I'm doing the hand signal as well as the verbal cue for stay. And so that's all we are trying to do right now. We're trying to teach them what behavior we expect for that particular keyword and increase duration slowly. So that's what I want you to work on at this point. Um, and I definitely want you to work on this for at least a few days. Don't overdo it. And I know I've said this before in other videos, training sessions should only be about 10 or 15 minutes at a time at the most. I don't want you getting frustrated. I don't want your dog getting frustrated. I don't want either of you getting bored. Uh, so really limit it to about 10 to 15 minutes at a time. And of course you can train different things in that one 10 or 15 minute training session. Um, so you can kind of keep things fresh and new for you and your dog in a training session. Don't work on the same thing for 10 or 15 minutes. You and your dog are going to get either frustrated or bored and we don't want that. We want to always end on a high note. So when you are ready to end your training session, make sure you end with something that is pretty quick and easy for your dog to do. That way you can provide them with a reward and praise and you are ending on a positive note. Uh, again, this is part one of a two part series. So in the next video, we will be talking about how to increase distance. So once we get down the duration with our dog, we want to start increasing that distance between you and your dog with the stay cue. So I will see you in the next video really quick though, before we go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, um, when you hit the subscribe button, a bell will appear, click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you every single view I get on every single video. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the YouTube algorithm and it helps out my channel. So uh, also leave a comment in the comments below. I'd love to know why you're here. Tell me about you and your dog. Tell me about what you're working on, why you're working on training. Maybe you just got a new puppy or you've had a dog for a while and you're realizing that you should have started training and now you're gonna go ahead and start training. Uh, it is possible to teach an old dog new tricks. So um, definitely <laughs> let me know in the comments below while you're here. I'd love to learn more about you and your dog. And if you haven't, oh my goodness, there's also a link in the description for my group. Join the family. That way you can share pictures and video. Let me know what you and your dog are up to. Let me know uh, what you're working on. Maybe things you're struggling with. Let me know about the wins. I want to be able to help you. So definitely check out the description below for a link to join the group. Thank you again so much for being here with me in this video and I'll see you in part two. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.